Hello class, this is Ms. Augustine, and we're working on Chapter 8, and today I'm going to review how to predict synthesis reactions. So, in our five types of reactions, remember there was combination or synthesis, decomp, single, double, and combustion, and the other ones um, will all have tutorials associated with them as well. So, for starters, let's remember what a synthesis or combination reaction is, and that is typically when two elements combine to form a single product. So the way you can uh, classify and notice that it's a synthesis or combination is that there's typically only one product. <clears throat> so if we're going through for a combination or synthesis, and again we use the terms interchangeably, if it's a metal with a nonmetal, then the result is going to be a binary ionic compound. So we would need to determine the charges of each of the elements ion, in that case, in order to then form a neutrally charged product, typically using our crisscross method again, and following the rules for writing binary ionic compounds, where you always write the cation first and then the anion. And then you also have to be mindful of special reactions. And most of the special reactions that we'll talk about, um, particularly in honors chem, would be covalent compounds. And then finally, balance the equation. And don't let diatomic elements throw you off. So remember, the seven diatomics are magnificent seven, so to speak. You can find them on the periodic table, if you remember that hydrogen's a weirdo off there on the upper left, and then if you can find nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, they form a 7 on your periodic table, and they have to be written as diatomics. So, again, reviewing synthesis of an element in oxygen to form an oxide. So in this case, our element is aluminum, which is a metal, and we're adding to oxygen, which is a nonmetal. That means we are forming a binary ionic compound. So we're going to get the metal oxide. The second case would be synthesis of two nonmetals forming a covalent compound. And so in this case, we have sulfur with oxygen, nonmetal, nonmetal, and we're going to get sulfur dioxide, which is a binary covalent compound. <clears throat> synthesis of a metal and a nonmetal other than oxygen to form ionic compounds. So again, here, aluminum and chlorine. Notice oxygen is not involved. It's still a metal with a nonmetal, so we're still going to form binary ionic compound. And then some of the special reactions. So when you have a reaction between water with a nonmetal oxide, usually they yield acids. So here, Sulfur trioxide plus water produces sulfuric acid. A metal oxide will react with water to give the metal hydroxide, which we typically think of as a base. So here, calcium oxide, metal oxide, plus water, and we'll get calcium hydroxide. So examples. Synthesis of an element and an oxygen to form an oxide. So again, the example I showed before of aluminum with oxygen, we have to remember the charges. Aluminum is a group 3 metal, so its charge will always be plus 3. Oxygen is a group 6 nonmetal, and remember, nonmetal charges are group number minus 8, so 6 minus 8 is negative 2. And then when we use the crisscross method, we will get Al2O3. So again, here would be our product, and then the only thing we would have to do is balance it. And you can see there are two aluminums on this side, or two on this side and only one on this side, and three oxygens on this side and only two on that side, so we're going to have to balance. When we do our balancing, we will result, the results will be four aluminum in the solid state plus three oxygens, elemental oxygen, would yield aluminum oxide. And I also want to point out, I would be remiss, that this particular reaction is also a combustion because anything combining with elemental oxygen is also a combustion. Example two, synthesis of a metal and a nonmetal 
<coughs> forms an ionic compound, and again, in this case, our nonmetal doesn't happen to be oxygen. So we have to form a neutral compound, which means we have to remember that magnesium is a group 2 metal, so its ion will be plus 2, and nitrogen forms nitride. Nitrogen is a group 5 metal. 5 minus 8 is negative 3. And the resulting compound with the crisscross method would be Mg3N2. So now we can write our formula for our product. So we have magnesium plus nitrogen yields uh, magnesium nitride. We need to balance. It's going to end up as three magnesiums plus nitrogen yield magnesium nitride. <clears throat> so now example three is reactions between water and nonmetal oxides to yield an acid. So here I have sulfur trioxide plus water. I'm going to form the acid, and in this case I'm going to form sulfuric acid. So SO3 plus H2O will yield H2SO4. And this one is one of our special reactions, and you'll notice it is already balanced. One sulfur on each side, two hydrogens, and four oxygens, three plus one. Example four, reactions between water with a metal oxide to yield the base. So here, calcium oxide plus water are going to form the base. So calcium oxide plus H2O will yield, in this case, CaOH2. Remembering that calcium here is a plus 2 and oxide is a minus 2. And so then when we come over here and form calcium hydroxide, remember calcium is a plus 2, hydroxide is a minus 1. This is again one of our special reactions, and it is balanced as is. So, to summarize, <clears throat> when predicting synthesis, it's going to be two elements typically combining to add uh, to form one product. So, the way you can uh, tell that it is typically a synthesis is that there's one product only. It's a combination. You're going to determine charges if it's a metal with a nonmetal. You're going to form a neutrally charged product in that case. You're going to be mindful of the special reactions. And you're going to balance the equation. And always remember, don't let those diatomic elements throw you off. This is Ms. Augustine signing off, and I will be sending more tutorials your way very soon.